In 1801, an Italian astronomer named Giuseppe Piazzi discovered an asteroid, which he named Ceres, orbiting the Sun in the region between Mars and Jupiter. Piazzi observed Ceres for six weeks, before its orbit took it too close to the Sun, making further observations impossible. This left him with a significant problem. Having only observed a short arc of its orbit, he had no reliable way to predict where and when it would emerge from the Sun's glare. He published his observations and highlighted the difficulty, which attracted the attention of Johann Carl Friedrich Gauss, a young, highly talented mathematician. Using Piazzi's limited data, Gauss devised a groundbreaking method to calculate the orbit of celestial objects based on a short observational arc. His calculations enabled astronomers to successfully relocate Ceres on December 31, 1801, cementing Gauss's reputation as a mathematical prodigy and solving one of astronomy's pressing challenges of the time. Gauss's solution used polynomial interpolation, fitting a polynomial to the observed data points of Ceres and using it to predict the asteroid's future position. While he was working on the problem, he discovered a symmetry in the roots of certain polynomial equations. By applying a divide-and-conquer approach, he was able to break the problem down into smaller sub-problems and leverage this symmetry to significantly reduce the number of calculations required. Without his realising it, Gauss's intuition laid the groundwork for methods that were later proved pivotal in the development of the vast Fourier transform. However, Joseph Fourier was still six years away from proposing the Fourier series, and although there is evidence to suggest that Gauss independently came up with his own discrete version of Fourier analysis in 1805, the same year as he published his Theory of the Motion of Heavenly Bodies, his ideas remained largely unknown due to his characteristic secrecy. It was only with the posthumous recognition of his work and the rise of computers that his ideas found their moment to shine. Over the next 150 years, several groundbreaking developments, starting with Charles Babbage's difference engine in 1830, reshaped the world and ushered in the computing age. By the early 1960s, computers were now powerful enough to perform thousands of floating point operations per second. However, this still wasn't fast enough to solve more complex problems such as calculating the discrete Fourier transform for even relatively simple everyday signals. But the potential was there, if only a more efficient way could be found to calculate the DFT. This was the problem that James Cooley, a researcher at IBM, and John Tukey, a professor at Princeton University, were trying to solve in the early 1960s. Their research drew on Gauss's work, particularly his divide-and-conquer approach to polynomial interpolation. Knowing a thing or two about sines and cosines, as Cooley and Tukey undoubtedly did, it seems likely that they recognised that the symmetry Gauss had observed in the roots of polynomials paralleled a similar periodic and conjugate symmetry in the sines and cosines of the Fourier transform. This connection is not surprising if you think about it, as sines and cosines can both be expressed as an infinite series of polynomials through their Taylor expansions. By leveraging these symmetries and adapting Gauss's strategy, they developed the cooley tukey FFT algorithm, which revolutionised signal processing and transformed the landscape of data analysis forever. But what are these symmetries, and how does the cooley tukey FFT algorithm actually work?